What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Reggie back at it again and today I've got a little update video on what I've been working on for the past about two months now. Uh, this is going to be my personal gaming rig uh, update video so I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little insight as to what I personally have been working on and dumping a lot of time and effort and money into uh, for the past two months. Uh, has kind of gotten in the way of my purchasing uh, of uh, fragrances, but it has been needed because uh, my old rig, uh, which I will show you, my old Q6600 uh, running on an 8800 GTS has uh, seen its days. So with all that being said, let's take a look at the new built rig. Now, I say two months because I've been waiting on dead RAM, dead fans, dead graphics cards. Um, I had a little bit of planning going into this, but it mainly took that long because of all the parts that essentially kept on failing and or were had to be RMA'd. Um, this one just came back in today, so I figured I'd shoot the video today. Uh, this is the uh, GTX uh, Asus Direct CU2 Top Edition card. Uh, just got it up and running, so I figured I'd shoot the video after getting that plugged in. The earlier one that I had, unfortunately, every time I plugged into a PCI Express slot, would disable the HDMI and Display Ports. So that had to get RMA'd. This one works perfectly and uh, overclocks like a champ as well. So let's do a basic overview of the rig. This is going to be, case-wise, the Rosewell Blackhawk Ultra. Now, as you can see in the front, I've got a nice plexiglass window that I put on there. It comes uh, stock with mesh. Uh, I think this is much more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, if we go around to the front of the case, you can see I've got uh, red LED fans going across the entirety up the top of the case. Red LED fans going across the top. On the rear of the case, of course the rear fan being red as long with the PSU that I purchased uh, from OCZ uh, having a nice red LED fan um, for ambient touch. Now. I also ran some LED stripping, if I can get my camera person in line here. So when you turn off the LED stripping, that's going around the entirety of the case. Um, I could pretty much get this pretty, uh, pretty low. Of course the uh, fan speed increases the lights as well for all the fans. So uh, it doesn't become that uh, bothersome in the dark, but uh, just for aesthetically uh, pleasing purposes, I'll keep it on for now. Uh, we'll go ahead and go to the front of the case and I'll show you the fan controllers uh, from NZXT. I'm actually very, very happy with these fan controllers. Um, they are five channel, a piece, 30 watt uh, fan controllers and uh, do a very good job of powering all the fans that I have in here. Uh, 11 total, uh, not including the PSU and the graphics cards fans. Um, I do have a couple of them set at certain um, levels right now uh, because I like to keep uh, at idle everything very inaudible. So I like to keep it very quiet. Uh, of course, and I will show you uh, here in a second, uh, when I am overclocking and gaming, uh, I do like to ramp everything up uh, to full blast, and uh, I'll go over that in a bit. I do have an Asus uh, optical drive here, along with the top, your standard uh, hot swap bay, and USB, USB 2.0 and 3.0 ports. Um, of course, let's go around to the actual front of the case, and I'll show you uh, the heart and the meat and bones of this rig. Uh, I put a 3770K processor 
which is overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz right now. Um, I did go a little bit higher and I could go a little bit higher, but um, I'm a little bit leery on running such high voltage. Unfortunately, I didn't get a uh, very well bin CPU. Um, it does overclock, but not as well as I hope. I was hoping to get to at least 4.9, maybe 5 gigahertz. Um, but as soon as I get to 4.8, I need an incredible amount of voltage, around 1.4 volts, and the uh, heat skyrockets from there. So I don't think it's really that much of a problem because uh, 1 or 2 gigahertz isn't really going to affect the, the actual uh, performance on uh, day-to-day use that much. But uh, again, going over this, I chose a closed loop thermal take water system. It got great reviews. I was planning on doing a full custom, uh, maybe Swift Tech water uh, cooled unit, but I do not believe with this Ivy Bridge processor um, that it would have benefited uh, actually doing so. Um, these really are only going to be um, affected with uh, LN2 uh, or liquid nitrogen. Uh, operations. So I uh, just stick with a uh, nice simple closed loop setup. The RAM that I have is Corsair Vengeance 2133 megahertz. I've got 16 gigabytes of that. Uh, of course you can see at the bottom the PSU as well as the um, Republic of Gamers motherboard, the Asus Maximus 5 formula which is very nice because it has that uh, Republic of Gamers glowing logo in the center along with if you come along down the bottom there is a strip which I will show you a little bit later in the interior part when I darken the lights uh, that glows red and both of those actually glow and this one pulsates even when the unit is off so it's a nice uh, aesthetically pleasing touch again uh, to an overall very clean um, or at least I tried to keep it as clean as possible with the cable management uh, going back and forth with this unit. Um, also at the top here if uh, my camera person can see that I've got two uh, Ultra Cos 3000 uh, fans 38 millimeter fans they work extremely well. They push about 134 CFM a piece, and uh, I will show you how loud they get here in a second. Um, right below you here, again, you have to have, and again, I say have to, you must have a good, uninterruptible power supply if you're going to have a couple of thousand dollar gaming rig because you don't want to have the uh, GPU, the CPU, the RAM, the motherboard uh, die on you due to um, uh, voltage surge and or uh, interrupted current. So this works very well. As you can see right now, I've got it displaying uh, the readout of the wattage, which uh, is not accurate completely, but it does get the job done. As you can see, I'll turn off my receiver went from 187 roughly to about 140, 150 watts at idle and that's including the monitor too. I'll turn it back on real quick and yes I also do game on my Xbox 360 got my wireless controller and uh, wireless headset there I'm very lazy so I decide to use this as my gaming center lay back with a bottle and uh, have a drink and a game with my buddy has been playing Borderlands having a blast on that um, let's shoot over here real quick and I'll finish up with uh, the software um, and actually I'll go over with the keyboard because this keyboard is amazing uh, this is the K90 from Corsair um, and really this is a beautiful keyboard I had uh, prior to this a uh, Razer Black Widow um, and before that a Satec uh, Cyborg uh, which is a membrane keyboard but I do like the mechanical keyboards with the Cherry MX red switches in them this uh, ambient lighting is very very nice and it is adjustable as well 
Um, the best part of this keyboard actually is right here. That is a fully functional media control center. So instead of having to use a function button to access your multimedia keys, you have them with a volume rocker on the fly which is directly linked right now to iTunes. So it's very nice if I'm having a conversation with somebody, I could press play and have my music up and running. Skip songs, turn my music down, or completely pause or stop, even mute the system if I want. That is almost entirely why I purchased that keyboard, because I absolutely love the feature. Um, the mouse that I have is an M60 mouse. Um, very nice mouse. Uh, I do fingertip grip, so I uh, absolutely love this mouse, and I've tried a bunch. Uh, this one happens to be my favorite. I used to have a Death Adder and uh, a couple of other uh, Razer mouses. Um, all of which were decent mouses, but this one in particular. And I even tried uh, uh, CM Storm, uh, Inferno, and a couple of others, but this one is a keeper. It's very well built. I took all the weights out, so it's extremely light and gets the job efficiently well. The tracking on this is exceptional. Um, I do game on 1080p, so the monitor right now is a 32-inch um, LED monitor, which gets the job done. Uh, because unfortunately, until they start making larger displays with higher resolutions that aren't uh, three and four thousand uh, dollars, I'm perfectly fine at gaming at 1080p. Um, let me go ahead and show you the software real quick, and we'll start off with the GTX uh, 680 um, Afterburner. I'm using MSI's Afterburner software to overclock this. Uh, right now, as you can see, I have it at stock settings. I'll go ahead and ramp it up to what I game at. And if you could hear that audible noise coming from the rig, that is the uh, GPU's fans kicking in at 100%. I have them at. If you go ahead and take a look at my GPU's, right now. I have it overclocked at almost a boost clock of 1300 and a memory clock of uh, a little bit over 1800. So uh, as you can see this is a pretty darn good card. Um, I was planning on doing the MSI Lightning um, but unfortunately it would have completely destroyed the aesthetics of that build and uh, for not that much gain ultimately in uh, gaming performance. Um, I have CPUs up running right now, so I'll show you real quick. Um, I'm going to run Intel Burn Test just to show you. We're running right now at 4.7. So uh, a very, very nice overclock voltage right now and of course my BIOS voltage is about 1.34 but with droop it's at right now 1.3 and uh, that's just really a nice overview um, I'll go ahead and dim the lights real quick and show you the fans when I'm overclocking I put everything up And as you can see, the front has a nice, along with the top, has a very nice glow to it. And uh, I'm very happy with the uh, overall aesthetic look that I was able to uh, put together in such a very uh, limited amount of time. And I'll turn off the LED lights stripping so you can get a better look of the Republic of Gamers logo. 
and the Supreme FX lights going down in the sides. Alright guys, well, that's going to finish it for right now. I'd like to thank you guys again for all of your time. Um, I'm going to be going on vacation here very soon, probably in the next week, uh, going down to Jamaica, so probably not going to be doing any videos from there on. So probably expect me within the next month or so to be doing um, my catch-up videos. And I've got a couple of really good ones for you. So I appreciate your time. Thanks again for watching. And again, rate, comment, and subscribe below. Take care.